वनकम नमस्ते नमस्कार वेलकम बैक टू जल प्रयाग आई एम गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू ऑन द डेज वर्क टॉपिक व्हाट वी डिड इफ यू रिमेंबर वी हैड कंप्लीटेड अ क्वेश्चन बेसिक क्वेश्चन ऑफ डेज वर्क आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ऑफ लुकिंग एट वेरियस कंडीशंस दैट कैन बी पुट इन द डेज वर्क क्वेश्चन ओके आई हैव टू स्प्लिट दिस इनटू अ कपल ऑफ पार्ट्स व्हाई बिकॉज़ आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू डू इट इन अ सिंगल शॉट so let me start off uh, the basic of those conditions and then i'll uh, keep uh, one by one looking into all the conditions let me just uh, show you what are the possible conditions and then let us start off okay let us uh, look at the conditions that can be put in a simple days work question um, i'll uh, take the case one by one as i said i will not be able to complete the full set uh, in one go it will be maybe two or three uh, parts of this also let's uh, check into the various conditions if you uh, remember uh, the basic uh, days work uh, table i'm going to show you after i finish this uh, particular slide i'm going to show you the basic table the few things which i needed for me to start my days work was my true course and the distance so the that true course i used to convert it to quadrantal course and with the distance uh, that is how i used to solve the basic triangle but uh, when it comes to days work i'm forming a table so instead of giving you a true course i could have given you a compass course also and uh, instead of true course i could have given you a gyro course also i can add a condition where i have wind or leeway in that particular leg or in all the legs also i can give you a ship's clock advance or retard when you start moving from one place to another so i could have given you that also i can give you a current which is affecting my passage i can give you uh, engine speed instead of giving you directly the distance done i can give you log readings so where i have to calculate what is the distance done in during that particular uh, leg of the passage i can uh, introduce engine failure also i can give you indirect position instead of giving you directly what is the known position that is what we did in the first uh, basic uh, question we did i can give you indirect indirect uh, the position could be initial or it could be intermediate also and one of the last type of conditions which they can introduce is your doubling of angle at the bow i'll be dealing one by one the uh, last few of them are a little bit bigger the first few are quite small i'm going to show you this basic table this is the uh, question we had solved in the last uh, session so this was the same question my idea is to show you what is the basic table now what do you expect in a basic table number one he has to give me the timing and uh, he has to tell me what is the duration of that time particular time let us say for example it was 12 to 1700 was the first leg what was the true course i did and then he will give you the distance this is the normal question out of this i will have to convert the true course into a quadrantal course then using this quadrantal course the theta in the quadrantal course like uh, the first line is 56 degrees and distance 75 nautical miles this is where i split them into delight and departure okay this is the basic table now you will see the changes let me show you the changes when uh, the data given to you are different let us start with the first one was compass course so in the question he did not give you the true course directly so he gave you the compass course uh, it's very evident he has to give me the variation deviation and you will be calculating the error and convert into true course i'm going to take one small example although uh, conversion has not been dealt at all in my uh, videos i'll make a separate video for conversion between true and compass so i'll do it later but i'm going to show you a small example Uh, let us say the compass course given was one to seven degrees. The deviation given was two degree east, and variation was three degree east. There are uh, a couple of ways of doing. Uh, I always suggest everyone to go on a logical sense. 
uh, I'll tell you one of the easiest way to do is deviation variation. Uh, if you do an algebraic sum of these two, you can get an error. Now, the simplest way is both the deviation and variation of the same sign, which is easterly. So I can add them and the error is five degree east. I'm going to apply this five degree east error on my compass course to find what is my true course. So you can see compass course is one, two, seven and error is five degree east. So when you apply it, as I said, there are different ways of doing it. I'm not uh, looking into those uh, criteria. Your answer will come as uh, one, three, two degrees true. Okay. So this is one of the ways to do is error east. So compass least. So I have to add five degrees to one, two, seven. And the true course is one, three, two degrees. And this one, three, two, the moment I get, I used to convert into quadrantal course and I used to proceed with the question. So I'm going to show you these various conditions based on this concept. I'm going to tell you what is the condition and how you finally end up finding your quadrantal course or something else also. It can be the distance also, depending on the distance. Conditions are put on distance as well. I'm going to show you the table, how the table changes. Instead of me giving you directly true course and engine speed, I have given you compass course. That is what is marked by the blue uh, column, the first column. Then in the two yellow columns, I have marked the deviation variation. I have done the algebraic sum, which is called error. I applied it to the compass course, got my true course. And that true course, I converted into quad course. And then I proceed with the problem. So I'm not going to show you the rest of the problem. I'm going to show you only the conditions. Okay. Uh, remaining, uh, all the columns are... Pretty much same. So that is what happens if I get a compass course. Let us look at the second condition. Uh, I might give you a gyro course. So for converting from gyro to true, I need the gyro error. I'm going to show you one small example. Let us say the gyro course given was 134 degrees and the error was given as two degree high. That means the gyro course is, is two degree higher than the true. So when you negate it, I'm going to get the true course is 132. Again, this 132, I'm going to convert into quadrantal course and I'm going to proceed with the same question. Let us look at the table. So instead of giving compass, I've given you gyro. I've taken a different example here, not the one which was shown on the previous slide. 127 degrees is gyro. Gyro error is three degrees low. So that means gyro is showing you lower. So true course is 127 plus three, which is your true course 130. Convert into quadrantal course, south 50 east, and then proceed with the question. So this is what you will do in this particular condition. Let us look at the third concept. Third concept or the third condition is when I give you a wind. Please remember, we have already done a lot of questions on wind and leeway uh, in your basic chart work uh, in allowing method and the counteracting method. Please go look into those videos for understanding, but I'm still giving you a small example. Uh, let us say uh, I am already given a true course and then the wind is given. So let us see what happens. I'm giving you a true course. My vessel is sailing on 132 degrees and uh, wind was coming from south and it was creating a leeway of 2 degrees. So you will see this vessel track will be pushed 2 degrees away from the wind. So the leeway track will be 132 minus 2 degrees, 130. So this is what is your leeway track. So the vessel is going to take a track on the water. The track will be based on the yellow color, which is here 130. Now this 130 is what is called the effective course. And I'm going to convert that into the quadrantal course and then solve the problem. So let us look at this table. Uh, rest everything is same. I've given you wind leeway. I've given you the true course which the vessel was sailing. But I need to calculate what is the effective course. I've given you two examples here. And that effective course, please convert into quadrantal course and then proceed with the same problem. So this is how you work for a wind and leeway. Let us look at uh, ship's clock change. Because uh, I did not use any other condition and I... Uh, gave this in the sequence because your clock change uh, affects a lot of other things. So that is the reason I chose this clock change to be as a fourth topic. You will understand this when I start doing the next uh, 
Uh, please remember a full day is 24 hours. And uh, if I have a clock advance of one hour during my day, that means I'm going to lose one hour. So my effective day will be 23 hours. And uh, if I retard one hour, then I'll be adding or gaining one more hour in my day. So it will be 25 hours. So this is what you need to apply on the duration of your legs. So you have to be careful. Okay. So please look at this. Uh, let me say the first leg was uh, from 12 to 1700, which is usually five hours. That is the second column I've shown you is five hours. Uh, let us assume that during this time, I advance my clock for one hour. So that means I'm going to lose. So basically, it is going to be effectively four hours. So this four hours, I'm going to multiply with my engine speed and I'll get my distance. Similarly, I've shown you uh, 2000 to four o'clock. You can see on the third leg on 5th of November. It is normally eight hours. The second column or the third column, sorry, it uh, tells you eight hours. I have retarded one hour. So that is going to add or we are going to gain one more hour by retarding. So it is nine hours, not eight hours. So I'm going to multiply nine hours into the engine speed of 11 knots. And the distance comes as 99. So uh, these are the kinds of uh, small changes you will do. I'm going to stop this uh, today's module with these four changes. I'm going to uh, come back to you again soon. Uh, I want to do at least uh, three uh, parts of this uh, conditions. Why? Because as I said, the last few conditions are a little bit big. You need more understanding and they are more confusing. So uh, I will do two small uh, sessions of easy conditions and the third one will be a little bit uh, need, it'll need more working. Okay, so please uh, uh, wait for the next two uh, videos that will complete the conditions of today's work. And with that, you will be much better than what you have before. Uh, keep watching Jalprayag. Until then, Anakam, Namaste, Namaskar.